The crazy thing about this video is that this isn't even the first time this card has been mentioned, but it seems like it hasn't caught on enough. I mean, the ability to stop cards like Effect Veiler, Ghost Ogre, Infinite Impermanence, and all hand traps alike, as well as being able to stop some on-field targeting cards like Nightmare Cerberus, uh, Trigate Wizard, and a plethora of other competitive cards, it still doesn't see play. Now, granted, this card does add a little bit more to your combo, making a two-card combo, a three-card combo, a three-card combo, a four-card combo, and so on and so more, but if your opponent actually hand traps your two or three card combo, it won't be a combo at all. This card actually is like an insurance policy to stop it. I think it's the mid breaker to what you need into your competitive deck, especially if you're combo heavy. I'm the Cali Effect, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. But more importantly, go ahead and hit that notification bell because, well, we just too strong. I also want to give a special thanks to every single one of my Patreons. Without you guys, videos like this would would not be possible. I really do appreciate you guys' continued support. Without further ado, I present to you the mystery card for today, and I'm telling you, this card is actually really good. At the very least, you consider you should consider it in your sideboard for a combo-based deck. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the people that don't know what card I was talking about and didn't catch the pun, who am I kidding? There's no ladies that play Yu-Gi-Oh. The card we are talking about is Magical Midbreaker Field. Now, Magical Midbreaker Field is a field spell card that ironically debuted in the Dark Illusion set because it's it's a it's an illusion because it's magic and it's a field. Okay, anyways, it's a factory. Activate this card at the start of your main phase one or two. During each player's main phase one, monsters in the field cannot be destroyed by their opponent's card effects. Also, neither player can target monsters their opponent controls. You cannot activate or set field spell cards. Now, there are a lot of pros and a lot of cons to this card. I'm going to start off by talking about the pros. I think one of Breakerfield's best applications is the prevention of hand traps. Cards like Infinite Impermanence, Ghost Ogre, and Snow Rabbit, as well as Effect Veiler, are seeing prominent play in today's metagame. Why? Because they all stop combo sequences and they do it well. Well, that's where Breakerfield actually steps in. Activate this card first and then start and go off with your combo, and now your opponent is left with up to three dead cards in their hand. And on top of that, you actually get to make the combo that you were originally trying to do. This puts your opponent in a pretty bad situation because not only, again, they have dead cards in their hand, you actually have the combo going off. And that's kind of scary. Imagine your Goki board finally not being interrupted by a card like Effect Veiler, Infinite Impermanence, or Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Keeping your most important precious monsters on your side of the field, but even more importantly, effectively preventing your opponent from having live cards. Now, this card actually does have some other applications, even if you do decide to go second with it. Play it against a deck like Paleozoic or any decks that have uh, lots of back row destruction abusing cards like Torrential Tribute, and you can start off with this card again, preventing them from destroying your cards unless they take care of this card first. More often than not, back row presence is kind of like 50-50. Sometimes people play it, sometimes people don't. More importantly, they're gonna have to prioritize, instead of getting rid of your back row, they're gonna have to get rid of this breaker field because it's such a pesky card at times. I think that this card is an excellent card for decks that like to get rid of your monsters or monster effects that like to target, as well as hand traps. It's such a phenomenal card at making your presence known. Now, just like all great cards, they have some drawbacks and mid breaker field is not prone to this disease. Mid breaker field has one huge weakness not only you can gain this effects, but during your opponent's main phase one, they can take advantage. And to make situations worse, Midbreaker Field can't be replaced by a field spell card that you own. That's too huge blow to the Midbreaker Field because even if you do have those hand traps, activating this card is a risky proposition. Another huge downfall to Midbreaker Field is that it has to be the first card you activate. Cards like Terraforming won't work with Midbreaker Field because it says at the start of your main phase. The start of your main phase start first hmm. those are two huge weaknesses are actually three huge weaknesses of mid breaker field but it's actually okay you can actually play mid breaker field as a three of and hope to open it because at any given time if you do open it before you start off your combo sequence you're in a good that actually brings up two more weaknesses to mid breaker field opening it oh no, no no let's not put that finger up opening it and helping your opponent has hand traps for you to stop. Hypothetically, activating Midbreaker Field when your opponent has no hand traps to stop you anyways is a terrible proposition. But then we don't like to live, live in the world of what-ifs. Activating Midbreaker Field when your opponent has hand traps, especially if you know they have hand traps, 
is just like a safe move to do. It's almost like an automatic. And more often than not, it could secure you a win. You can think of this card as a win more, but at the same time, you can think of it as a safe investment to put cards to your side of the field. Now, this card does have a lot of cons, but sometimes the pros outweigh it. I think that it's a very solid card that at the very least should be in your side deck for when you see a player's playing a lot of hand traps, especially the ones that you don't like to get hand trapped, then you put it into your main board and you're good to go, especially seeing that if you're gonna decide to go first, you might wanna put yourself in a position to succeed. With all that being said, there's only a couple of things to cover. Midbreaker Field's price sits at a all time high of 20 to 50 cents. Now granted, looking on TCG Player, there are not a lot of listings of Midbreaker Field. A lot of them are ones. There is one guy that's selling six of them for 19 cents each, but I, I'm not sure if you guys would be able to get that because somebody's gonna see this and then buy that out then it's just not gonna be there. I think that this card will probably at max be a $3 card. That's like the ultimate maximum price that this card could ever be in in a certain set of situations that would make this card mandatory. I don't see it being any higher. But we also do have to keep in mind that the Dark Illusion set was not reprinted for us inside of a special edition for North America. So, I mean, it could go higher maybe. And then on top of that, just see the situation that it's only subjected to some cards. Ash Blossom and Joy Spring and Joel and Lockbird, this card doesn't affect whatsoever. So while it is a great card, it does have its drawbacks and on top of that, its price is relatively cheap. I see it as a safe investment. Looking on Yu-Gi-Oh! Scope and Yu-Gi-Oh! Top Decks, this card has seen like zero play. Like, it's kind of depressing how it's seen no play. And yet it still is a very viable card against some of the top competitive decks of the format. Ultimately, I think it's a great card though. I think that you guys should definitely take a look into it. And if you are playing a high combo level deck that is prone to cards like Effect Veiler, Ghost Ogre, and Infinite Impermanence, you should consider playing it in your main board, if not your sideboard. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you didn't, let us know down below in that comment section how bad it is. I mean, I really do appreciate it, especially if it's constructive criticism. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.